Volkswagen says its new electric cars will be able to do 700 kilometers of range. That is pretty impressive. And the key thing it has me asking myself is, will this be able to reverse Volkswagen's dwindling fortunes in China, where it makes 50% of its profit every year? However, it's rapidly losing market share because, well, for a few different reasons. Obviously, in the West, we think Volkswagen is doing really well. The truth is, mm, things are not quite so rosy. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking, great to see you here. Thank you for subscribing to the channel, for supporting, well, what this channel is all about, which is having a better future, having a better planet, having a better world, and really giving people the information they need to make the best decisions. Should you buy a Volkswagen EV today? Yeah, you should, if you live in a place where you can get one and they're affordable uh, and it meets your needs, then absolutely, Volkswagen makes some good products. But unfortunately, only 5% of all of their cars sold worldwide are electric. Still a pretty small number. And they are losing a lot of market share in China constantly. That's where they make 50% of their profits. So yeah, they are in a little bit of trouble. They do need to react quickly. Herbert Deese is well aware of this and that nearly got him fired. It's sort of like saying, elephant in the room, look, look, everyone. And then the rest of the company says, fire him, fire him, fire him. Anyway, getting back to the point here, the MEB platform. It's actually a pretty good platform. The EVs from Volkswagen, to be fair, they are in China. They're perceived as being subpar. Their sales in China are pretty low. There's lots of options over in China. People have much better choices for less money. Eventually, could that be the same scenario Volkswagen will face in other countries around the world? Absolutely, it could. Even Herbert Deese himself paraphrased exactly what I just said. He says the Chinese and Tesla are Volkswagen's two biggest competitors. He's very aware of what's about to happen or what's in fact happening right now. Volkswagen, therefore, need to act. They're aware of that. Therefore, what are they trying to do? Well, they're trying to use advanced battery technology to improve their competitiveness, to improve their product. The reality is, I mean, look at the 0 to 100 kilometer hour performance times of their ID vehicles. They're pretty mediocre. It's sort of like, it's not aspirational. And don't get me wrong, the average person doesn't probably doesn't care too much about that. But remember, it's the people who are passionate about cars. They're the ones who sell them to their friends. They're the ones who are like, oh, I've got this car. It's a Tesla Model 3 performance. It's a whatever, you know, it's a BMW M3, I love it. You should go and get one. It's great. And you know, often those buyers don't go and buy the Tesla Model 3 Performance or the BMW M3, but they go and buy that brand's vehicle based on their friend's recommendation. That's just a very, very normal way that the world works. That's why so many cars, so many people buy, well, what they buy without ever researching it, without watching a YouTube video, without reading a review. It's very common when you look at surveys that people don't even do any research before they purchase an expensive vehicle. I mean, it's the second biggest purchase that you make in your life behind buying a house. So having an aspirational vehicle is important. It's important for Volkswagen to be able to say, we have premium products. Like for example, right now, Volkswagen has the Golf R, right? That's considered a pretty cool, fast car. A lot of people love it. What do they have when it comes to EVs? Mm, right now, nothing. What will they have? If they can say our EVs have a range of 700 kilometers, well, that's big bragging rights. Now, what's 700 kilometers in miles? It's actually 435 miles. Apparently, this new change will impact upcoming models. So it could potentially happen in 2023, so within 12 months. Now, in a chart released by Volkswagen showing its portfolio of MEB-based EVs, the ID Life and the Aero B are listed as models that are expected to arrive by 2025. It seems as though it's very likely that the Aero B, which is a more expensive car, will be able to come with a range of 700 kilometers. In addition to this, Volkswagen is saying their charging speed for these upgraded MEB platforms is 200 kilowatt. And acceleration will be significantly improved as well to 5.5 seconds to zero to 100 or zero to 62 miles an hour. Now this would truly give the brand more of some Halo, obviously, they, not all their cars are going to have this performance and this range, but clearly this would give the brand a little bit more kudos, a little bit more marketing, maybe a little bit more respect, because there are a lot of people making the same comments that I'm making. I know a lot of you don't care about performance, but some of you do. And there's a lot of people saying, oh, why is it so slow compared to its competition? Why? And I, that's the first thing I wondered when I saw the specs of these cars, of Volkswagen's cars. I was like, why are they so slow 
compared to the competition. I just don't understand why. Even though you don't necessarily need the power, it still is something that can be useful sometimes when you're having to do things like merge into traffic to accelerate quickly all of a sudden. Now, Volkswagen is saying they are aware of this, right? They're saying, Viking, you're not wrong. We're aware of this. No, they haven't responded to me at all. But anyway, they do want to drop the sprint time to 100 kilometers an hour to 62 miles per hour to under 5.5 seconds. That's their goal. Currently, the Volkswagen ID5 GTX has 300 horsepower and it does the sprint in 6.2 seconds. It doesn't really add up to me how it can have that much power and be all-wheel drive and be that slow. I, I don't really understand it. It's like normally, right? Normally, German automakers, they say, oh, our car has 500 horsepower. It really has 600. That's the industry norm. Look at the YouTube channel CarWow. They make these kinds of comments all the time, and they're actually testing these cars, doing drag strip times in these cars. And they say, oh, the German automakers, they'll say this much power, but it's actually got this much. But it looks as though Volkswagen is doing the opposite with their electric cars. They're saying it has a lot of power, when in reality, the performance seems to imply it's got less power than they say. Now, for legacy automakers, the MEB platform is one of the first of its kind. It's dedicated to electric vehicles, and Volkswagen began development in 2015. Now, this is important. For example, there's quite a few EVs that BMW, Mercedes, and other manufacturers make, right? which are just internal combustion engine vehicles, right? They're the same car, they're just modified to make it an electric car. And then you look at the weight of the car and you think, that thing is freaking heavy as hell. Like the BMW, so-called their new electric car, it's insanely heavy. It's like 600 pounds heavier than equivalent similar vehicles. Why? Well, because they didn't build it from the ground up. So this is one advantage Volkswagen have over some of their German competition. Same thing with Mercedes, right? When I did a video about the Mercedes EQA, I was shocked to find things in the car that just didn't make sense. It's got a transmission tunnel, right? The transmission tunnel affects the person who sits in the back seat. They can't get good proper leg room when you have that tunnel. And that's one of the advantages of EVs, right? You don't have that transmission tunnel. There's a lot more leg room in the back. Where the Mercedes EQA actually still had the transmission tunnel, but no transmission. It's just hollow. There's nothing underneath it. They couldn't be bothered removing the transmission tunnel. So, you know, this is one of the advantages of the MEB platform. Now, Volkswagen began development on that in 2015. And the first production vehicle to be underpinned by it was the Volkswagen ID3. Now, though, there's nine different models that use it, not only from Volkswagen, but also from their partner brands or the other brands that they own, including Skoda, Seat, and Audi. That's a big advantage that Volkswagen have being able to build one platform and then use it across a range of different brands. Now, Volkswagen are actually saying that the charging speed will be over 200. And they said doubling. So right now, the current charging speed is 125 kilowatt. That could mean that likely with this new specification coming out next year, we'd be looking at 250 kilowatt charging potentially. And if that is the case, that would definitely give Volkswagen a lot more kudos and a lot more credibility when it comes to charging speed as well. However, they are just saying that it's going to be over 200. So I could be wrong on that. It might be closer to 210, 215. Let's wait and see because they would also have to change the charging voltage on these cars in order to improve the charging speed. And without charging the voltage, they might not be able to improve charging speed to 250 kilowatt. So will this change Volkswagen's fortunes in China? No, I don't think so. To be honest, it, Legacy Auto, the perception by the Chinese consumers I mean, there's 1.35 billion people in the country, is now that electric vehicles are done better by China. They're, they're done better by Chinese car companies and by Tesla than they are done by Legacy Auto. And that's one of the key reasons why Legacy Auto manufacturers are losing sales. Not only are they not manufacturing enough EVs in the first place, but the EVs they do come to market, the media just writes them off and says, oh, this is not that good compared to a product from Neo, a product from Xpeng, a product from Aeon, a product from a number of different car companies, Elite Motor, et cetera, et cetera. So I personally think the decline in Volkswagen's fortunes is irreversible simply because only 40% of the cars that they sell, right, are sold in China, but 50% of their profit comes from China. If you lose, say, half of that, 25%, that's a huge, that's billions and billions of dollars every year. And when you consider the fact that Volkswagen has more debt than any other car company in the world, they have to service that debt every year, Mm, very, very concerning. That's not me saying you shouldn't buy a Volkswagen EV. I like them. You should definitely consider one. 
especially considering you can still get the seven and a half thousand US dollar tax credit in the US to go to towards one which makes them very affordable. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.